so not true. Whatever happens when you have to play an octave on a black key? It depends on where you're coming from and where you're going to and or the tone that you wanted to produce. If you understand how the thumb moves and can unstuck it right after, you can pretty much play the thumb everywhere. In order to have complete freedom of the thumb, you have to first understand that it moves this way and not that way. If you're playing a chromatic octave and I'm, if I'm just isolating the thumb, it would look something like... If I exaggerated, it would look like this. There's so much complex movement that is happening, but what you want to do is just, you want to make it small and effective. To keep the thumb free, it, this I mentioned on, in, in episode two, is that you have to let whatever happens after the thumb comes out. So coming out after the thumb, so this is hanging and free, this is free. And then before the thumb you go, inside so you just have to drop yeah so if the thumb is engaged your whole palm is engaged and what usually happens is that if you don't free the thumb and you keep it there and it's engaged what happens to the other fingers that you stretch and you reach so for example in this Haydn's variations theme this is what I like to do. The traditional way of fingering this would probably be... And you see the difference. Each finger has a characteristic and the thumb by its nature is already large and move in a different way. So usually it creates a louder sound. If you don't want an accent there, that's your indentation. And so if I use the thumb there, all I have to do is just naturally come out and I don't have to actually do anything to make the F beautiful or not hit an accent there. 